Okay, guys, this video, we're going to go ahead. We're going to start building out our company profile. And this company profile is going to have a snapshot of all of the revenues and all of the earnings that our company receives in the form of a TTM. A TTM stands for trailing 12 month revenue. And it's basically just a year to date snapshot of how much money you made in the business. And we've already wired up our nested routes. You guys already know what nested routes are. The only thing that we need to do is get the data and actually put it into our ratio list. And we are going to have a great company profile page that will display all the TTM data and all of the actual nice snapshot ratio so that we can do more in-depth work on our stocks. But let's go ahead, let's jump into VS Code and let's start hooking up this ratio list to this company profile page. Okay, so now we are at the company dashboard. The company dashboard is this part right here. The entire page is this part right here. The dashboard lives within the page. So what we need to do is we need to pass down our ticker data through the page, through the dashboard, into the actual profile component. And the way that we're going to do that is with use outlet context. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go up to my outlet right here and I'm just going to type in context is equal to ticker, just like this. And we haven't passed, we don't actually have this in here yet. So what we need to do is we need to pass it down and we also need to type it as well too. So now we've got that, it's going to pass down into the actual context, the ticker that we have, but there's nothing actually even being passed down. And we're actually supposed to be getting an error right here, which it didn't pop up immediately, but it did show up eventually. And now we need to actually pass, pass this part down. And this is going to be super easy. All that we need to do is go down here, give it the same exact name that we typed it, pass down ticker just like this, and we should be good to go. We could put some maybe some null checking right there but i think that's kind of a little bit overkill but if you want to do it feel free to go ahead the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually go get the ttm data we don't have an api endpoint for the ttm data so what we're going to do is we're going to of course go get it from financialmodelingprep.com and if you want the actual link for it i'll just go ahead and show it to you uh right here it is key metrics slash TTM, or you could just go to the website and just type in key metrics TTM into the search bar on financial modeling prep, but if you want it, but also make sure that you realize that you're gonna have to add an API key to that as well too, because financial modeling prep requires you to have a API key. So now what we need to do is we need to go actually create the API. We don't have an actual API endpoint for our key metrics. so. What I'm gonna do is just copy and paste this and I'm going to call this key metrics. And then I'm going to uh, type this as company key metrics. And we don't actually have the key metrics, so we need to type this. And luckily for you guys, I just went ahead and typed this out for you. If you want the type, just go to the endpoint, go to the company D.TS. I'll leave a link down in the description for you guys and you can go ahead and copy and paste this i would not copy any of this out uh i would just go ahead and copy and paste this into the company d.ts and you will have company key metrics as a type now what we need to do is we need to of course switch out this api key right here and what we're going to do is we're just going to go back to financial modeling prep grab that URL, then go into here, and then we are going to go ahead and copy and paste it. Also, remember that you need to switch this out for the query as well too, otherwise you're just gonna get Apple for everything. I've done that before, and it is very annoying. So, don't do what I did. All right, anyways, let's go ahead, moving along here. The next thing is that we are going to have to actually bring in this API data into our company profile page. So we have a company page. Now we have our company profile page. We've actually already created our company profile page. Remember that we have to actually pass in configs for our table. And what I'm going to do is once again, I'm just gonna go ahead and give you all of the configs for it. You could type this all out. Feel free to change it however you like, but a lot of this would be torture to actually type out. So I just went ahead and made it for you. So go ahead. I'm gonna leave a link down below 
And this also includes all of the balance sheet, the cash flow statement, and the income statement, and the company profile. And just go to the actual company profile. Go ahead, grab this whole entire config right here, and go just copy and paste it straight into the company profile page. And go ahead, of course, bring in your company key metrics, and congratulations, you now have a table config. The next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to have to create dummy data for our actual design guide so that our design guide doesn't break. So just go into here and copy and paste the table config into the company design guide. And I'm just going to bring in, let's say, uh, I need to ch change this to any just so that it doesn't break and also need to go ahead and close this out right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the data and we're also going to put in the test income data right here. And it's going to give us a red squiggly line because we haven't actually typed this and we're going to type this right after. And then we're going to pass in the config and then we're going to pass in the config the, or the table config, I should say. And now our actual design guide won't break when we do what we're about to do right now. So we need to go into the ratio list and because we're no longer in dummy data mode anymore, what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that we can actually go ahead and pass data into this ratio list. So go up here, we're going to pass in config and it is going to be equal to any because this is a reusable component. We're going to be passing all types of data into it. So you're going to have to put any or you're going to have to type it in a way that will allow you to pass in other objects and just go ahead and turning out the TypeScript was probably the best way that I could think of to do it. Just straight off the top, there may be a better way to do it, but I researched it and I couldn't find a better way. So I just added any sometimes just like I said, you got to turn off that TypeScript. It is not ideal, but it is something we have to do sometimes. Also, let's go into here and let's add a extra bit of padding and mark. Also, let's go into here and let's add a extra bit of margin. So I'm going to go into here and give this ML4 and MT4 just like this, just so that it looks extra spicy. And we're going to go ahead now. And I think we're ready to go in and pass in our ratio list to our company profile. All of this is looking good. The config is looking good. Now we're going to go ahead, bring in our ticker through use outlet context. So use outlet context, bring it in control dot. Of course, doesn't look like it's going to be brought in on its own. So I'm going to have to go ahead and go up here and use outlet context up at the top, just like this. And I'm going to say react router. Dom. Okay, that looks good. Finally was able to bring that in. Now what we're going to do is declare our state where we are going to store our company data that we actually get back from the API. So go up here, set company data, and it's going to be equal to use state. And we'll type it because we're in TypeScript. We need to, you d probably never want to not type the use state. If there's anything that you really want to type, it's probably the actual use state. Okay, so we need to go ahead and bring in use state. And for some reason, React is acting crazy this morning. I don't know what exactly is wrong with it, but it's not wanting to bring anything in. Sometimes it happens like that. Just kind of got to roll the punches here, but we're almost done. And we're going to go ahead and get our API data through use effect. So go back up here. So use effect, that looks good. Okay, then we're going to create an async function. Remember that you have to have an async function uh, in order to actually await. So we're going to go into here, company key metrics. I'll call this company key metrics. I think that's probably the more appropriate uh, variable for it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and wait. I'm gonna say git, I think it is git key metrics. Yep, uh, it's in the API file. Remember, don't call this one or else you're going to get a crazy error and then we're going to go ahead we're going to pass in the actual ticker right here and remember it when you use outlet context you actually have to type it otherwise it's going to say this weird like unknown thing and i actually once again don't know what it is i just know that you need to actually type the use outlet context to be able to get it to go away so set company data go ahead pass in the value 
the value can be null. So if there's nothing that comes back from the API, we need to add that little question mark right there. And that's going to tell us that this thing can actually be undefined or not have a value. Also, remember, remember, if you don't remember to actually put these square brackets, it's going to call the API like a thousand times in a second and your API is going to stop working because it's going to stop you or it's going to throttle you. So always, always, always remember to put that or else you're going to get your API privileges revoked or you're going to blow your API uh, data in one like 10 seconds and you won't even know it until it happens and i know that because i actually did that okay so what we're going to do in here is we're going to go ahead we're going to create our ratio list and it accidentally created an extra one right here and we're also just going to fill this up with some uh filler data until we can create some spinners and we will just say loading just like this and dot 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 and we'll just do this until uh, we get done here and we'll add loading spinners to make it look really good and go up here. And of course, we're going to add our ratio list. We're going to add our company data just like this. We're going to go ahead. We're going to toss in our config and I don't know what I actually called this. Yeah, I think I just called it table config just like this. And I need to move this up here. So I'm going to go ahead and move this up here. And the moment of truth, does it work? That is the most important part. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and load everything up here. Also, I forgot to actually call this down below. You need to call this. And when you actually fix that and you add the company key metrics, sorry about that simple mistake, what you get is you get all of this juicy data. You get all of the trailing 12 month revenue. Anyways, after this, we're moving on to the balance and we're also going to move on to the cash flow statement. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.